Hey there, uh, welcome. My name is Dee Teal and I'm a bit of an interloper here. I'm a WordPress developer. Um, I work full time as a freelancer doing front end and I was invited to come along and just talk about community or talk about WordPress or actually start building some bridges between our communities, which is basically what I'm here to do today. Uh, because I know an enormous amount about the WordPress community and less about the Drupal and Joomla communities, I've actually in invited some others, ring-ins, to co actually help contribute to this conversation. So what I wanted to talk about is what it is that we can learn and teach one another. Now, I can tell you, again, an awful lot about the WordPress community, but in actual fact, what I really want to do is turn this into a bit of an introduction about all of our communities, but then also invite conversation with everybody and actually turn the second half of this presentation into a bit of a panel, just because I feel like um, we all have something to contribute to this particular conversation. So I'm going to start off by introducing Brian Gilbert, who's going to come and talk a little bit about the Drupal community, which is probably the one you guys know more about, and probably the one that I know less about, having less to do with that myself. And then I'm going to hand over to Patrick Jackson, who is one of the lead organisers for Joomla in uh, Melbourne, and then I'll wrap up this part of the, the conversation with a little bit of an introduction to what the WordPress community looks like, and then hopefully we can have a bit of a chat about that. So over to you, Brian. Uh, hi everyone, I'm, I assume I'm mostly preaching to the converted here, so <laughs> I'll probably go a little bit faster. Huh? Convert me. Convert you, yeah. Didn't I do that last time? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm Brian Gilbert, I organise the Drupal meetups in Melbourne and have helped organise previous Drupal conferences in Australia and mentored at international Drupal cons a couple of times as well. So Where do I point it? It's all right. I'll just use the keyboard. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> so these these slides were used as a at another event where it was, was breaking into open source. Uh, and so my angle of attack was about my story in Drupal. So really, when you start out, and this should be true for any of us, when you first start out in an open source project, no one really knows who you are. Um, and really the way to get known is to don't just stand there and actually get involved. Uh, and you may have heard, well, depending on what talks you've been to, some of the ways to do that in Drupal are get on IRC, uh, start being active in issue queues and so on. So you should actually just do that. Um, and then uh, the other things you can do, depending on your means, is actually contribute back to open source. So. Um, my company, Reality Loop, between three developers, we have around 70, somewhere between 70 and 80 contributed modules on Drupal.org. Uh, we're a Drupal Association supporting partner, so we pay money um, to the Drupal Association for that, which gets you know, helps maintain Drupal.org infrastructure, uh, would probably help towards the D8 Accelerate grants and so on. And we also organise the events locally, which I've been doing since 2009. So, uh, so um, I, I was one of the co-organisers of Drupal Down Under 2012. Uh, in the last year or so, I've probably trained almost 600 people on how to get involved in contributing with Drupal, uh, setting up their local development environment. So that was in DrupalCon Austin. Uh, that was in DrupalCon Amsterdam and then Code Sprints at DrupalCon Amsterdam, uh, Drupal Camp Melbourne, which was the first one that had been run in many years, which we ran earlier this year. So it's really um, the best way to be part of the community is to give back to that community. You'll, you'll gain a lot from that. Um, and I think it's, you know, any of the CMS projects we're talking about, I think it's the community is what makes it worth it um, at the end of the day. That's my, my take on it. So, and really, we all have a common goal about, you know, what we're aiming towards is to, well, if you, in the bigger picture, it's kind of make the world a better place because we're using tools to build sites that help people do things, hopefully. 
Um, and there's just some links. So if it's a bit hard to read here, but um, these will be on the internet when it gets transcribed to YouTube or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Unless people have any direct questions, yeah. They're all. Oh yes. Me. Hang on. Yeah. So, uh, so Miguel asked if I think there's anything unique about the Drupal community that makes us better or different uh, than the other communities. Um, I don't know enough about the other communities, but I think the real strengths of the Drupal community is that um, the community and and I guess you don't, or in my in my case, I didn't really get a sense for that until I went to a DrupalCon, which was DrupalCon San Francisco. And even more so than the conference was going to the contribution sprints after the conference and the coders lounge during the conference. So at DrupalCons, they usually have somewhere that's pretty much 24 seven, you can go and just code. Um, and I was going to the coders lounge every night until two o'clock in the morning or something like that. Uh, I got my first patch in Drupal core for the Drupal seven. Angie was the one that committed it um, and you get, to meet those people, and that's where you really do get a feel for they're not um, they're not people that you can't interact with because they're uber in some way or anything like that. Um, and I think I, I imagine it would be very similar in any case. It's it's the interactions and the the connections you make, the friends you meet, are what make it um, special for for me anyway. Um, and I can't imagine that they would be greatly different. I think the major difference that I've seen in the Drupal space is that we don't really have an ecosystem of paid modules that the other systems tend to have. You know, if you want really good modules, often you've got to pay something to get them. Whereas in Drupal, there's a lot of awesome modules and they're, they're all there for you to use. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, yes, so Dee asked, what's the difference between a Drupal camp and this conference? Uh, so a Drupal camp that we ran was a much smaller event, so we capped it, which was partially based on venue at, I think, 50 people, and the tickets were $5, uh, and you got, you know, a shirt and food, and, and the people who came actually were the presenters, so we didn't have um, a defined schedule of presenters for the event until the day of the event. Like yeah, we ran it like a bar camp. Um, and then this is probably more of a, I think they have similar to a summit in Drupal talk. Uh, and then Drupal cons are now getting to three to 4,000 people at a conference. So yeah, big, yep, yes. So uh, the question was, if you don't know anything about Drupal, can you come to the sprints and help? Um, I would say yes, there would definitely be something you can help with. Um, so there's many, you don't have to be a coder to be able to contribute to Drupal. So there's documentation, would probably be a really good place. Are you from the library as well? No, no, okay. I just assumed if you're sitting next to it, I thought maybe. Yeah, um, so a lot of, I mean, if, you're, if you feel, and there will be assistance on the day in doing some of this process, if you feel that you can get Drupal running on your machine, on your laptop, then contributing to documentation, which just means testing, you know, trying to create basic content and finding problems and documenting issues you come up against would be uh, awesome because as Angie said at the start, we need people testing stuff to find things because there's a lot of core contributors. Uh, well, I'm, I don't know if this is 100% true, but there is some belief that some of the core contributors don't actually build sites, they build core. And so they, they, they know the problems that people come up against, but they're not actually doing those things every day and finding those problems. So that's where getting more people involved in core helps make it a better product because 
um, at the last presentation with Lee Rollins was, um, you know, we have itches that we want to scratch to fix problems, whereas some of the core contributors are possibly um, just making a better system than what Drupal 7 was. Obviously, they're taking the feedback of everyone and the issues from the issue queue, but I think, yes. Yes, there is definitely something you can do if you come. So we have two events a month. We have uh, on the sec sorry, second Monday of the month, which this month is a public holiday, so we're not having it, but we have a presentation-based meetup, which is from 6 p.m. at, I think, it's if you go to meetup.com slash Drupal Melbourne, that's the address, uh, Richard will be able to give you the link if you need. Um, that's, we usually have one or two people present something, so the people who are using Drupal, uh, sometimes we get people, so with last time we had someone from Oracle come and talk about database stuff. And then on the third Saturday of the month, every month at the State Library from midday until 4pm, we have uh, mentoring where anyone can come and have zero experience with Drupal if you want and we'll help you get a Drupal site up and you just ask questions and we'll do our best to help you out. So, yeah, no problem. No, that's right, it's the Joomla slide. That's me, good. Uh, I'm Patrick Jackson, I'm with the Melbourne Joomla User Group. Uh, I've been using Joomla since it came out in 2007, 2006, um, Joomla was originally um, a fork of a project called Mambo, and Mambo was originally developed right here in Melbourne. So um, at the time that I was hunting for a, a CMS, uh, I think Drupal might have been in its infancy about that time, maybe and very early version, an earlier version that, that might not have been as um, user friendly as I was hunting for. Uh, and I think WordPress made me scratch my head a bit at that time as well. Um, Mambo sort of clicked and then when it forked to Joomla I, I stuck with that and um, have become a bit of a, a Joomla consultant's consultant in Melbourne. Um, we've got about 120 people in the Melbourne user group um, that sort of semi-regularly come along. Uh, and I've probably done work for about 50 of those over the last couple of years, so it um, keeps things interesting, seeing what other people are developing and then scratching my head as to why they did the way they did it. So, um, so to get involved with Joomla in Melbourne, um, we started the group uh, once Joomla had forked in 2007, three of us at a pub in near uh, Melbourne Uni. Um, and then since then we've gone through and held uh, four conferences. Uh, the last one was at um, Swinburne at the start of last year uh, and then um, nationally the Joomla conference schedule moves around and, and uh, um, the day conferences are called, or, and weekend conferences are actually called a Joomla day um, and then we have other events uh, in the Melbourne Joomla user group um, meet currently on the fourth Wednesday of the month at Swinburne. Uh, at Hawthorne, um, where we're very uh, glad to have a, a sponsor. Um, they helped us with our venue for the conference last time as well, which uh, considerably saved um, some of the cost there. So we've got uh, a mixture of members with um, various experience. We've probably got uh, probably about 30% of the group are, are people that are actively um, supplying Joomla hosting and implementing Joomla sites. Um, and then the rest is a mix of, of graphic designers who've have chosen Joomla, um, some programmers uh, and then a number of hobbyists, so um, people that have only built their one site and the questions they've generally got are, are to do with their very specific things. Um, some of us that have got many more sites have got uh, a number of questions that uh, cause us to scratch our heads and um, it's always a good place to, to try and share those ideas and, and uh, troubleshoot, which is again where some of that work's come from for me. So we're uh, looking always at what the audience is after and we're, we're in the process of seeing what types of things people want to know about. Um, 
because we've got such a diverse user base, um, it ranges from sort of just going through what the next version of Joomla is going to bring, and 3.4 came out a few weeks ago. So that's sort of the, the hot topic at the moment um, in the group. Uh, and then we're also looking at now um, at getting more onto the programming side, and so some of the sessions later in the year will be on uh, how to contribute issues back uh, and fixes back into the Joomla project, um, how to set up sort of development environments and, uh, and use GitHub and things like that to, uh, to help with fixing the little bugs that people find in Joomla along the way. Uh, and that should correspond into helping other extension developers in Joomla to, um, to fix their uh, issues when they arise as well. Um, I've got a, an Evernote note uh, on my computer that's currently got about 30 issues that they're not actually bugs in the system as such, they're more just user interface features that need some improving. Um, and they, they, I myself have got to learn uh, the, the GitHub side of things shortly to, to get going with all of that. So, so nationally we've got joomla.org.au um, and there's about uh, eight Joomla user groups around the country at the moment and they're all um, reasonably active. Um, the Sydney one's actually just forked, for want of a better word. Um, and so you now there's a, a, a Sydney one that meets in the CBD and then a North West Sydney one that meets out near um, Blacktown. Um, and they're both um, quite active there. Uh, we're just revamping the national organisation website and um, the forum there gives um, the advantage of giving support in local time. So if, um, if we've got users that, uh, that need some help, they can jump on there and, and quickly get an answer. Um, or ideally try and get an answer. Um, quite often it might be that we point them in the right spot to go on the, the global forums and things like that. So. Uh, and then there's the Joomla project itself, which is, um, it doesn't have a, a, a figurehead company as such. Uh, there's Open Source Matters is the foundation that's been founded to, to manage the funding and, and development of the project. Um, and the corporate governance of the project, um, but we don't have something like Automatic or Acquia to, to drive what's at the top there. So um, it's a very volunteer contributor based uh, organisation in that regard, um, which has its pros and cons obviously, um, but at the moment it's, uh, it's functioning reasonably well and the number of people that are involved now has been rapidly increasing over recent years. Uh, so the forum at joomla.org gets um, over a couple of hundred thousand hits a month at the moment and uh, it's certainly a place to, to start if you've got any questions with, um, with Joomla. And then the documentation is constantly undergoing a revamp uh, and I was recently involved in a project where we were rewriting the uh, um, documentation about upgrading Joomla um, because we've got a couple of uh, older versions that really are at end of life now and so they need to actually um, try and encourage people to upgrade and those upgrades have been a bit, they need a bit more planning than just a single click. Um, so now the, the roadmap for Joomla has a single click process moving forward, um, though the current version that just came out had a few extensions that, that then had some glitches that um, were waiting for the next uh, sub-release to come out to, to fix some of that. Uh, and then the other parts, uh, you know, there's a large translation team. Um, Joomla's got over 40 um, core installation language files at the moment, and there's sub-projects uh, that aren't fully maintained for another 25 languages at the moment. Um, the extensions directory at Joomla has over 10,000 um, extensions on it, uh, and that's been recently revamped, so it's sort of more, uh, it's got more of a, a flashier marketing side to it. Um, but that's a mixture of free and um, and paid extensions there. Um, I'll ask the because uh, all the components on the WordPress site go through, like you, yeah, through a review process. So the the Joomla extension directory is a little bit less stringent. There, there is a review process. Um, they'll scan it for malware and, and other um, bits and pieces there, but um, I don't know that it's as stringent a review process and you can also um, you can also develop extensions for Joomla but not actually put them on the extensions directory. Um, but uh, from a marketing point of view, you just lose an entire access to a user base there. Um, the Joomla installation process has increased 
dramatically in the last two years with that, and you can now install from the web um, using the web uh, interface. Though they've just had a, a revamp of uh, part of that, so that I think is still down for another week while they fix an issue there. Uh, and then obviously there's issue reporting and, and the GitHub um, interfaces there to um, contribute back to the actual code of the project. There's also a number of working groups. There's an a ever-growing global marketing team um, which take on various projects like the update thing I was talking about, um, but also major releases. And then we've got um, uh, smaller sub-projects in that to help new users and try and uh, increase the word of mouth about Joomla over the next 12 months. Uh, the developers um, and the product leadership team are, are both um, in charge of actually working out what features are going to go into the new builds and then managing the teams to, to get that to happen. The documentation team obviously write up uh, all the instructions and that's an ongoing task as uh, things change periodically in the new versions. Then you've got the extension directory, editors and reviewers. Um, sites and infrastructure team manage all the Joomla subdomains, so there's, there's several of those that you'll see on the next couple of slides. Forum moderators and translators, so there's plenty of ways that people can get involved in the project. So volunteers.joomla.org is actually a, a new portal that's been added where um, you can go and find out who's contributing to the project and it, it basically gives credit to all the volunteers that are, are part of the project. Um, and that quite often can lead to if you find the, the right person, they might be looking for some work or be able to help you with a, a different type of project that you've got. Um, more targeted at that is the resources directory where people can list themselves as a Joomla provider. And so people can uh, go and try and find um, someone to help them with the project. Uh, we're trying to recruit some more Australian Joomla folk to uh, get on that and get set up so that um, we've got more than, I think we've got 11 when I looked last uh, around the country. So um, those 11 have got a bit of a monopoly. I think there's only three that are listed in Melbourne at the moment. Um, and then the showcase is a, a site of a directory of all the different types of sites that you can um, see in Melbourne, oh, sorry, see um, globally that are using Joomla. So if you want more information on uh, the Melbourne Joomla user group, you can go to meetup.com slash Melbourne Jug, and then uh, we're on Twitter, uh, there's the national site and then the global site there, and that's, I think it's about all, ah, no, and that's the feature that came out, um, so where WordPress.com have hosted um, WordPress sites, part of that, um, Joomla.com has just been released uh, in the last couple of months, and that has now um, is now giving a free service uh, similar to WordPress.com, where you can quickly install a, a Joomla install and um, and give it a, a play around with it, and uh, uh, then either build a, a full site or or then take it and. Um, put it on different hosting if you need to customise it more than uh, we've got in there. So, yeah, cool. Any questions? Yep. Uh, from, the from the project contributors, um, we've, we've got a large user base but not so much a contributor base at the moment, so that's where the target uh, of activities this year is to try and sort of pull more people in. Um, I'm jealous of the attendance here because we get uh, you know, 120 to our conference and that was sort of, you know, um, in, in the, this type of stream, you know, we'd be lucky to, I think I did a presentation at our conference where um, uh, I was up against one of the international keynotes that we had and so my presentation went to five beginners uh, on how to start up Joomla. So, um, looking at how we can increase the community and get the people out the door. And I was talking to Dee earlier that um, the WordPress conference is held on the weekend and we've held the Joomla ones on the weekend. Um, one of the, the things that we've always got a, an issue in trying to find out, uh, so traditionally we've got either um, small business operators that are doing Joomla themselves or, or hobbyists coming to the conferences on the weekends, when what we really want to find out is the people that are actually using Joomla and their employees 
um, to try and get them along to increase the community there. Thanks. Thanks, Patrick. So, predictably, I'm here to talk about WordPress and the WordPress community. Uh, this is who we are. We're developers, we're users, uh, we're designers, and we're all enthusiasts. Um, I think you'll find a lot of similarities between what um, Brian and Patrick have already said. Um, so I'll skip through it pretty quick. Uh, you can find us at meetups. Uh, we have... Uh, in fact, just gone to four meetups a month. We have the Word Chicks meetup, which happens usually on the first Thursday or first Saturday of the month. This was an initiative started to actually get more and more women involved in contributing to WordPress, um, talking about it, coming and speaking at meetups, just to create a place where um, it's comfortable. Uh, you know, a bunch of us girls who've got involved have felt awkward and uncomfortable sharing what we know, or intimidated really, and this was a place to actually kind of mediate that a little bit. Um, we don't actually restrict attendance only to women, and we've had um, a lot of men come along and contribute as well, but um, it was just an interesting experiment, um, which continues and um, seems to be getting reasonably popular, which is pretty cool. We have the users meetup, which is the second Wednesday of every month, and this is, um, last year we actually followed through a program where we introduced, this is how you set up WordPress, this is uh, how you add plugins, this is how you um, add a theme or customise the look of your site, and this is how you do SEO. And so we basically work through a program through the whole year of getting users from go to woe, um, which we videoed and then made that available for those who couldn't kind of be there from the start of the program. Um, this year it'll be a little bit different, um, and we're kind of seeing what crops up for interest's sake throughout the course of the month before we sort of plan what's happening for the next one. And then, of course, we have the developers meetup, and that happens on the third Wednesday of the month. So there's one coming up in a few weeks, and then we predictably talk about all things code. We also have word camps, which I guess are, are quite similar to this kind of event where we all get together, we talk WordPress. Like Patrick mentioned, we tend to have them on a weekend, um, and usually over two days. We all often have a developer and or a user stream. And um, the thing with WordPress events is that we try and keep them as accessible as possible, and so the cost of them is really, really low, which means, A, a mad flurry on the part of the, of, of the organisers to get enough sponsorship to cover the costs of the venue and so on, but also, um, it, you know, a big push for ticket sales. Our last one that I organised was here in Melbourne in April of 2013. Um, we had 300 people attending, so we're pretty happy with that. Um, we're hoping to have another one in, May uh, in Melbourne this year. There's also one in the works for Brisbane, which is pretty cool. We had one in Sydney last year, uh, which was also pretty well attended. This is what a WordCamp looks like. looks pretty familiar. looks very much like what we're seeing from here. And there are WordCamps happening basically every weekend of the year um, around the world. I had the opportunity to go to WordCamp San Francisco, which is the kind of headline event of the year last year. And, and um, had some time in the US to hang out. And one of the cool things was, was like, okay, so I need to find something to do. I had a, had a week to fill in, so I get on the site and go, oh, hey, there's a WordCamp in Raleigh, North Carolina. Maybe I can go to that, which of course then turns into a pitch for a presentation and, and the opportunity to speak. But it also meant that that, you know, jump from one side of the country to the other was the tax deduction, which was also a pretty awesome benefit. Um, you can also find the WordPress community on wordpress.tv. And so every event that we... Um, schedule uh, actually gets recorded um, if possible. Certainly all of the WordCamps, one of the big plugs from Foundation, which is the kind of body that looks after the branding and looks after WordCamps. The big suggestion is please video the event and that we can um, make this available to other users. And so this whole website is freely available for people to get access to any of the video from those. Um, WordPress.org is the first place that a lot of people will find themselves. This is where they go to download their own self-hosted version of WordPress. It's where all the documentation is. It's where the forums are where people can get involved to talk about it. Um, and it's where you can also get involved in getting involved. Um, and here are the, some of the ways. Again, very predictable, very similar to most of the other open source projects that we've looked at. You can do documentation. You can do support, outreach, which is organising meetups, word camps um, and events. Um, the accessibility polyglots, which is our huge translation or uh, group that are involved in the huge translation project, and um, much like you guys have been talking already, translation is a really big deal uh, for WordPress, and a big push is happening into getting more and more people translating the core, and then of course translating plugins and themes for it as well. 
Um, you can also, of course, get involved at a deeper code level doing the UI and UX, um, the meta, which is all of the things that support these things, like running the WordPress.org website, um, plugins, mobile, and, of course, contributing to Core itself. Much like the others, you can find us at meetup.com. Uh, you can find WordCamps at wordcamp.org, WordPress TV at wordpress.tv, and then the contribution section, which is make.wordpress.org. Clearly, this is only of some interest because you guys are all Drupal dev. But um, I thought the thing that I found, and certainly in the last conversation that I had with these guys when we were at General Assembly and there were a couple of other people presenting their, um, their experiences with community and community organising, this is the thing that I kept coming back to. We're actually far more alike than we are different. And so... Um, one of the things that I kind of want to challenge or wanted to get involved in coming along here and why I was so excited to actually have this opportunity was because I keep coming up with things like this. And unfortunately, you probably can't read that too well, but I tweeted yesterday. So um, I'm presenting at Drupal South tomorrow. Seriously, do I wear a WordPress T-shirt or not? And this was the suggestion of the T-shirt that I should wear. <laughs> now, it's funny because it's true. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> But this is the kind of thing that I hear all the time. Ooh, Drupal, Joomla, you know. And what I would really love is, as people get to see that we are, in fact, all very similar, and that, and I know that I really love to think that I'm platform agnostic and that if I had a project that would do much better on Drupal that I would suggest somebody go to that. The fact is, is that everything I've wanted to be able to do, I can do on WordPress, and so I keep using it. Um, but... That this is the kind of conversation that I kind of go, it's funny, but it's also kind of disappointing because we do all have such incredible similarities. And so I guess my challenge is to try and spark some conversation around, you know, what can we do that actually changes the way that we talk about each other? Um, opening up events to each other, uh, certainly like me having this opportunity, but next time I'd love to drag along half of our team and go, come on, you guys, let's get involved, let's talk to these people because they're developers too and they're PHP devs too and they're making great products as well. Now this is, um, I guess, where I kind of want the conversation to start. Um, our erstwhile organiser, Donna, asked this question, radical, uh, treasonous thought follows, is WordPress more popular than Drupal because its community cares more about its users? And I'm going to start opening the conversation, I guess, with this. Um, I'm less concerned, quite frankly, about who has more market share. Um, I am concerned about what do you guys think in terms of what we see about each other. I mean, you may know less about WordPress than I know about Drupal, but I kind of want to ask these kind of questions. What does it look like? What does caring about your users look like? How does that affect our ongoing development or our ongoing contribution? And what would embracing users change what we do as developers of any given platform? So that's my question. Is there anybody who's brave enough to answer? And if you would, would you mind coming down and answering at the mic so that we can record that? <laughs> I beg your pardon? That's even scarier. Actually, somebody having a record of what you actually thought. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was a movement to go to the mic. Okay. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, there's no right or wrong answers. I'm as curious to learn from you guys as, as, I, as I am to tell you what we do. So. Well, I used to uh, develop for WordPress quite a few years ago, and one of the big differences I found was that WordPress seemed to be, um, for developers, seemed to have more documentation around stuff versus Drupal. Yeah. Um, WordPress also seemed to be a little bit more user-friendly from the get-go for users just to be able to use it versus Drupal, whereas Drupal can set it up. So, You know, one of the things when um, WebCheck, whose name just flew completely out of my head, was presenting this morning, um, was that I was watching all this kind of front-end dev stuff and I'm like, oh my God, that's starting to look like WordPress is like, I'm like, kind of, yeah, that's awesome, and kind of, oh, far out, they're going to start snapping out of heels really soon. So certainly that kind of, <laughs> and then it's like, well, actually, hang on, it doesn't matter, we're all the same, um, in theory. Um, so I really like 
I, I think you're right. I think actually starting to think about how people use what we're using is it going to make a massive difference to what we carry on building, not only just for... One of the things that I've found in, in recent times with um, some of the designs that we've been doing for projects that I'm handing off to clients is I have a developer that subcontracts for me and he goes, yeah, but we can put all of this stuff in, but how's the end user going to use it? What if we build this in the admin for the user? And it was like you know, fireworks going off. So that my next project, I'm using A, half of his code, and B, also, you know, some of his ideas to go, well, I can, I have this flexibility. Actually thinking not just the solves, and somebody else mentioned, you know, the scratch is a niche, but um, it also solves a problem. Thank you. Thank you for being brave enough to answer the question. Has anybody else who'd like to contribute to that? Sure. Um. So I got interested in usability, which is kind of embracing users in a way, um, back in 2008, I think. Um, and it's, it's, it's not an easy question because there's different users that have different needs, but I think anything we can do to improve our products for end users and make it easier for them is going to increase adoption, um, which helps feed more of us as devs, I guess. So that's probably, at the end of the day, one of the strongest motivations that I could think of for it being a good thing to do. Because I assume most of us earn our living from these products. Um, and uh, I think it, it uh, you can tell with the push towards, uh, you know, HTML5 and uh, web standards and, uh, improving on accessibility in Drupal, you know, it's, it also helps those people who have um, cognitive, physical, etc. impairments that make it harder. And I think that's, again, helping make the world a better place, which is karma for devs, I don't know, good yeah. karma. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think it's, it's a noble goal, it's a worthy goal, uh, and it would be awesome if we could magically make every developer care about the user experience, but um, I guess we all have different paths that we've walked to get here, so I don't know how to do that, but mm -hmm. yeah. I guess it's one of those things that we keep talking about and keep, as the more we keep talking about it, five minutes, thanks Matt. Um, and certainly accessibility is a huge push in WordPress as well, same with translation, huge conversations happening around all of that, and great to have teams that are involved in and pulling it all, all of that sort of stuff together. Um, I'm going to skip past that one because we've only got five more minutes. And I was reminded about this this morning in one of Matt, um, Matt Mullenweg, who's one of the founders of WordPress, and one of his keynotes, I think it was WordCamp Europe, it may have been last year, he talked about this idea of what he's called five for the future, companies dedicating 5% of their people to do or to be working on something to do with core, and, and he outlines that being security, support forums, documentation, dev, um, not just code, testing and translation, or whatever it might be that helps WordPress move forward. Um, I wondered if you guys had a similar program, or if you thought of, or if your contribution happens within or without your kind of work experience. Now, what Matt was talking about here was particularly there are a large number of companies now starting to, to grow and develop who are building their whole business model, I guess, on stuff that they're doing with WordPress. There are a number of kind of big agencies that are fully WordPress focused. There are a bunch of guys that are building for WordPress BIP, which is the kind of high-end WordPress.com hosting for enterprise. And so Matt's suggestion is, is that if everybody gave 5% to the project, that would really help the project and it would really help their businesses. And I thought, do you guys have anything similar? Are you interested in that kind of thing? Do you think it's valid or viable? Uh, Brian. <laughs> Brian, the mouthpiece for Drupal this morning. Well, I can, I can speak in the context of reality loop, my company. Yeah. We, um, not necessarily towards core all the time, but every time we make a patch, our our whole development process means we have to contribute it back to Drupal.org. So if we have to make a patch against the module, uh, we have a make file which references the module and then any patches are in that make file. So it's number one, it's documented for the project owner. And number two, it's contributed back to Drupal.org. Uh, 
whether or not the de module developer decides to incorporate that into the project or not. It, so even if it's a, a, a case specific patch, we still put it on Drupal.org so that if they ever change their developers, they can still have access to all of the code. Um, but um, I don't know as a percentage of time, we obviously give back to the community through organising the events and mentoring people at conferences. I think the biggest problem, like we're a small company, there's only three of us, um, and that puts a constraint on our earning potential that mm. you know a much larger company can afford to give 5% of time because not every person in the organisation is going to do that necessarily, but they have a larger pool of money coming in to allow diverting some of the funds toward that. I mean, truth be told, we would probably give 100% of our time if we had a, a revenue stream to do it. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that's, I think, um, what I think is very useful and the, the D8 Accelerate, I think Angie's left, but is sort of alluding towards that where there are companies who have the funds but don't necessarily have the skills internally or they make a living from using these products and they can contribute back by... Um, Supporting a yeah, contributor. Yeah, by you know, giving to that fund allows that to help the acceleration of Drupal. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be awesome if there was companies who could do that to other organisations who may have very strong skills in their company but not necessarily the infrastructure to yeah. organise a, a program like that and I don't know how you would structure that. But, you know, we've got several Drupal projects that we want to work on that we don't have the time at the moment. And I'm trying to, you know, do up um, proposals to take to organisations that may be able to fund and, cool. and have uh, a use case for those organisations as well, so to help them make sales. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to be here. I'll be here for the rest of today, so if you want to talk WordPress or want to talk community or want to talk open source, I'm totally up for it. That'd be great. But thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it.